The show opens in the present day, where our protagonist, Han Tae Ho, has a bloody ice pick in his hand. He looks around in fear as two people are lying dead in front of him. Meanwhile, he's covered in what seems to be their blood. From his puzzled expression, it seems as if he has no idea what's happening. The movie then skips to 2012, when Tae Ho moves to the small town of Maju. He's here to rent a place for himself, and a local broker shows him around a modest home. As he's a high school student, it comes as a shock to people that he lives alone. However, Tae Ho tells the home broker that he's moving alone because both his parents are dead. Furthermore, he reveals that Maju used to be his mom's hometown. While the two are conversing, a luxury car passes nearby. The home broker immediately bows to the person sitting in the back of the car. After it's a safe distance away, the broker tells Tae Ho that the young boy in the back seat is Kang In Ha, the third but illegitimate son of the Kang O Group CEO. The scene then shifts to later that night, to the huge Kang mansion, where a party is taking place. At the center of the party is Kang In Ju, the eldest son and the heir of the Kang O Group. On the other hand, In Ha has locked himself in his room and does not join the party. It is clear that being the illegitimate son, he has been ostracized by his family despite living under the same roof. Watching from nearby is Tae Ho, who notices In Ha looking on as the party rages outside. The very next day, Tae Ho goes on a hunt for a job and finds himself at a local supermarket. But the owner reveals that they do not hire high school students and suggests he try another store down the road. While they're conversing, Tae Ho notices In Ha shoplifting from the supermarket. The owner notices it too, but chooses to overlook it. Hence, he also turns around and leaves the store without saying anything. After a while, Tae Ho manages to find a part-time job at a local restaurant. Just as he's coming out of his new workplace, he notices In Ha by the street. And once more, In Ha picks up apples from a street vendor and leaves without paying. An hour later, Taeho returns home after a quick shopping trip. Outside the hardware store, he's confronted by In Ha, who has also been noticing him. In Ha gloats that everyone in Maju sees him picking up things for free, but no one has the courage to stand up to him. In response, Taeho points out that people pretend not to see him as he is not significant to anyone. This touches In Ha's nerves, as he does feel invisible to his own family. But before he can snap back, Taeho marches on his way. The next day, we get to know that the two attend the same school. It's also revealed that Taeho is amongst the 0.1% top scorers in a nationwide mock test. At lunch, In Ha throws a lunch tray at Taeho in an attempt to bully him. However, the latter reacts with similar aggression, and the two find themselves in a fistfight on the roof of the school. The commotion only stops when a teacher catches them and asks them to fill out an apology report. Later that day, Tao receives a call and frantically runs to a monastery. When he sees his mother disguised as a monk, he screams at her to run away. We find that Tao's father was the one who called him. He is not his biological father and is in prison on death row for domestic violence. However, he threatens to kill his mom and seems to know that she's alive. On his way back home, In Ha and Tao fight in a boxing ring. In Ha promises to teach him how to fight if he manages to win. Initially, the well trained In Ha quite easily beats the clueless Tao. However, the relentless beating reminds Tao of his father and all the times when he used to physically assault his mother. This motivates him so much that he gets up and starts dominating his opponent. By the end of the fight, In Ha proposes to be his friend but Tao rejects the offer. The next day at school, one of the students finds out that Tao is a criminal son and proceeds to berate him. But to everyone's surprise, In Ha comes to defend him. Later at the rooftop, the two boys bond and become good friends. Tao then proposes a strategy that will benefit both of them. Get In Ho to the top of the Kang O group, which will in turn help him as well. The scene then cuts to a few years later, and we see Tao and In Ha studying at Han Kuk University. Tao works several part-time jobs, from teaching maths to working at a construction site at night. But despite the hectic schedule, 
he always manages to spend time with his best friend, In Ha. Later, Tae Oh is called by his professor, Chae Dong Uk, regarding an industrial strategy report that he made for a project surrounding the Kang O group. Its focal point is a co prosperity cooperation center, a business unit in various startup companies that focus on acquiring other businesses through investment. The professor wants to buy the report, but Tae Oh refuses. Instead of cash, he asks Dong Cheuk to help him in the future if he asks for it. This is all part of his and In Ha's plan. In the meantime, Tae Oh feels drawn to his neighbor and fellow university student, Na Hai Wan. One day, while the two chat in a library, In Ha notices them. He later asks Tae Oh if he likes the girl because if he doesn't, In Ha wants to pursue her. Although Tae Oh is interested, he doesn't seem to take initiative. Later in the day, he goes to the tutoring job at In Ha's family home. There, he meets his sister, Kang Hee Ju, who is instantly enamored by him. A few hours later, In Ha picks Tae Oh up after his tutoring session. While they discuss things, it's revealed that In Ha and Hee Ju share a close sibling relationship, even though they're half siblings. The next day, Kang Jung Mo, the CEO of Kang O Group, observes his son's actions since the War of Succession has begun. His second son, Kang Seung Ju, is regarded to be the prospective successor. Elsewhere, the CEO's wife, Gyum Seok, is plotting for Seung Ju's succession. She asks In Ha to sign a waiver to give up his inherited shares of the company in return for lifelong financial support. He signs it without any hesitation, and it's revealed that this is also part of his and Taeho's plan. Later, Hai Wan brings Taeho to a place she used to live in. There, she says that both of them are similar. She suspects that Tae-ho is using In Ha for his own ulterior motives and is interested in doing the same. She then asks if Tae-ho would help her, but he flat out refuses to do so. However, he adds that he will not get in her way. The scene then shifts to the Kong household, where the entire family is having breakfast. During this, Hee-ju floats a suggestion to invite In-ha to attend the family dinner on Saturday. This suggestion angers In-ju, the eldest son of the family. He begins to berate Hee-ju for even suggesting that someone like In-ha can be a part of their family. However, despite protests from both In-ju as well as his mother, Jung-mo sides with his daughter and agrees to invite In-ha for dinner on Saturday. Later, Gyum Suk approaches her husband and asks him to reconsider his decision. Jung Mo is more clever than he looks, as he uses this opportunity to remind his wife that he is the one who owns Kang O Group. To her surprise, he also reveals that he knows about the contract that she forced In Ha to sign. Jung Mo then calls In Ha right in front of his disapproving wife and invites him to dinner on Saturday. With her secret out, Gyung Seok brings the waiver she made In Ha sign and gives it to her husband. On the other hand, In Ha cannot believe that his father invited him to dinner at the family home. However, Tae Ho brings him down to earth and tells him that his father is a very cold and calculated person. Hence, he suggests his friend to pretend to be innocent with his family so as not to appear as a threat. Elsewhere, Jung Mo's second son, Kang Seung Ju, is also scheming to become the CEO of the company. He meets with Tae Ho's professor, Che Dong Uk, for a discussion over the Co Prosperity Cooperation Center. Seung Ju is extremely impressed with the report and offers the professor a good position at the organization. Later that evening, He Ju skips her class to have dinner with In Ha at a fancy restaurant. As they're talking, In Ha finds that their server is Hai Wan. Although he's taken aback, he greets her warmly. Later, he manages to corner Hai Wan when she's alone and asks her out on a date. But she claims that she's too busy these days due to work and studies. Her continuous rejections makes In Ha even more interested in her. The next day, he comes face to face with his older half-brother, In Ju, at the Kong household. The latter wastes no time in throwing a barrage of insults at him. However, In Ha remains calm and doesn't get baited into an insulting contest. Soon, He Ju arrives at the spot and she defends In Ha. But this only infuriates In Ju and he starts insulting her. She retaliates by biting him ruthlessly, drawing the attention of the entire household. 
Because of this incident, In Ha is forced to leave the house as Gyum Seok blames him for this chaos. Later, Jung Mo finds out that his son was once again thrown out of the house without his approval. This angers him, but he doesn't react at the moment. Later, In Ha meets with Tae Ho and tells him about the incident. In response, the latter suggests him not to let such small things weigh him down. Tae Ho urges his friend to get mentally stronger because he may have to face harsher insults in the coming future. However, there is good news too. Tae Ho tells him that just as they had planned, Seong Ju had met his professor Che Dong Uk regarding the Co Prosperity Center. The next day, He Ju pretends to go to school but visits Tae Ho at his university. She confesses her love towards him. However, he remains unmoved and mercilessly rejects her, saying that they only have an employer employee relationship. Although she pretends to be tough, she later cries her eyes out in the car. The scene then shifts to Hai Wan's mother, Yoon Hyang Mi, who works at a shady gambling bar. She sees the owner bring in a lot of cash and cannot help herself. After making sure no one is looking at her, she steals some of it and runs away. Unfortunately, the next day, when the owner cannot locate Hyang Mi, they barge into Hai Wan's class at the university to recover their money. However, she refuses to give them any money and suggests they find Hyang Mi herself or file a police complaint. Enraged, the owner slaps Hai Wan and she slaps him back in retaliation. Just as he's about to slap her once more, Tai Ho comes to the rescue and stops the owner. Seeing the university security guards approaching, the owner and his goons run away. Later, when Hai Wan and Tae Ho are alone, she shares that she isn't phased because such events have often happened to her. She also refuses to run away because that will mean acknowledging that her mother is her family. That afternoon, In Ha gets the news about Hai Wan being attacked by loan sharks. He calls her, but she purposely ignores it. Worried, he rushes to her university. When he eventually finds her, he proceeds to give her a kiss. Just then, Tae Ho arrives at the scene and he catches them in the act. Later that evening, we see that Tae Ho is bothered by what he saw earlier. As he's on his way home, he meets Hai Wan who's moving into In Ha's house temporarily. Usually a calm person, Tae Ho finds his patience disappearing and he asks Hai Wan to not go. He wants to have a future with her, but Hai Wan tells him that he will regret his decision as it will push In Ha away from him. She then leaves after reminding him that if she rejects In Ha, both of them will be in the lowest rung of the social ladder. Following this, Tae Ho goes back home utterly devastated. However, Hai Wan, who is on the way to In Ha's house, has a change of heart. She comes back to Tae Ho and knocks on his door. But he thinks about what Hai Wan had said earlier that he will regret if the two of them settle down. Just then, he receives a call from In Ha, while Hai Wan continues knocking on his door. He makes a difficult decision and chooses to pick up In Ha's call. Outside, Hai Wan also realizes that he's made the decision to keep the friendship with In Ha instead of the romantic relationship with her. Hence, she turns around and leaves him for good. The scene then shifts to years later on the fifth anniversary of the Co Prosperity Cooperation Center. In Ha is one of the employees working there, and currently he welcomes his father, Jung Mo, and his half brothers for the anniversary program. On the other hand, Tae Ho's university professor, Che Dong Uk, has become a director of the project. Seong Ju, who is the vice president of the center, hired Che Dong Uk so that he could have his trustable men in positions of power. During a meeting with Jung Mo, Che Dong Uk introduces Tae Ho as the employee who wrote the ceremonial speech. After the meeting is over, the CEO tests Tae Ho by challenging the speech he made for the ceremony later on. He asks Tae Ho as to why the speech tries to paint an image of him which is different from the real image. Jung Mo keeps piling the pressure on Tae Ho and reveals that he knows all about his family. He attacks him with his background saying that Tae Ho made his father look like a murderer. This catches Tae Ho off guard, and he almost agrees to leave his position at the company. But the chairman quickly reveals that this was only a test. Jung Mo adds that if Tae Ho wants to be successful, he'll have to learn to hide his emotions better, 
and not let anyone know what he's thinking. Later, after the ceremonial speech, Tae Ho is appointed as Jung Mo's secretary. Five years later, Tae Ho has become a close aide to Jung Mo. On the other hand, the tensions within the Kong family are increasing as the power struggle for the Kong O group continues. Meanwhile, Jung Mo has picked a candidate to be the leader of a local political party named Han Mi Party. He plans that this candidate is going to help with his ambitious Royal Road project. The project involves building a large city on the west bank of Maju, which is going to become a country within a country. The site for the project has also already been purchased. Elsewhere, In Ha works in the IT branch of the center, whereas Hai Wan works in the political campaigning team. A quick scene also introduces a mysterious hacker who is informed about the ins and outs of the Kong O group. The hacker sends a clip of Xiang Ju meeting with Zhou Sun Dong, the political opponent of the chairman's approved candidate. Later, Tae Ho, In Ha, and Hai Wan discuss this new development with each other. From their conversation, it's revealed that Xiang Ju wants to increase his grip on Kong O Group. The first step to that is electing Sun Dong as the leader of Han Mi Party. A few days later, the party's election takes place, and Sun Dong wins the post of the leader by a wide margin. As Xiang Ju and his mother celebrate, it's revealed that Sun Dong will be against the chairman's Royal Road project. Hence, his candidature for the Han Mi Party president is a threat to the CEO himself. In the following scene, Hai Wan and Tae Ho meet where he inquires if she's planning to marry In Ha. However, she responds that she hasn't thought about it yet. Tae Ho changes the topic and emphasizes that it will get difficult if they don't stop Xiang Ju. He asks Hai Wan to bring him more inside intel that would help them. Elsewhere, He Ju is rebelling against her mother's decision to get her married. She visits Yum Siok's office and declares that she is not going to agree to an arranged marriage. In the meantime, Hai Wan wiretaps the conversation of a colleague to find out more about Xiang Ju's plan. At Yin Ha's place, Hai Wan reveals the conspiracy that Xiang Ju and Sun Dong are planning to malign the CEO Zhang Mo with charges of embezzlement and negligence. The next plan is to separate the Co-Prosperity Cooperation Center from the Kang O Group. Following this, Tae Ho meets with the mysterious hacker who gives him photos of Xiang Ju and Sun Dong. Along with it, Tae Ho gains information about a fraud organization named Save Africa Refugee Relief, which is under a foundation named after someone called Zhang Noik. Meanwhile, Gyum Seok meets with her husband's doctor and blackmails him to gain information about his health. It's here that she becomes aware that the CEO's heart condition is severe. Next, Tae Ho briefs CEO Jung Mo about the Save Africa project being used to launder money. The foundation is owned by Gyum Seok's family, and it's revealed that she is the one behind Sun Dong winning the post of Man He Party leader. Since the Co-Prosperity Cooperation Center is under a team led by Vice President Xiang Ju, the plan of the takeover becomes apparent to Zhang Mo.